All right guys, he's in here. Welcome back to the channel for another Street Fighter Duel video. This is a video that's actually been kind of prompted by a conversation I was having on my Discord, not my Discord, on my guild's Discord yesterday, talking about basically ways that someone could improve their score. In fact, it may have been the day before. And I've realised that, you know, this is something I could go over for all players because these tips that I'm about to give you all tied together and it could in theory actually make you into a better player. These are essentially what most of us who are getting high scores are doing, taking advantage of. Little things that essentially mean that we go from getting to maybe three billion to getting five, six, seven billion, okay? Now, obviously that range of scoring is going to depend on you, your box and stuff like that, but you should still be able to get more points out of what you have knowing these things that I'm going to be talking about in this video if you're not currently doing them, okay? So I've got a couple of videos so that I can show you visually back proof backing up the things that I'm talking about so that you can... I guess know with faith and confidence that what you are hearing is actually true and correct, okay? So, so I've used the guild boss as an example piece on this right now. This is literally just because this is a boss that I could do multiple runs in, record footage in, so that I could talk about the things that I want to talk about while going through this video, okay? Now, <clears throat> the number one way that you are going to get more points is by playing this game manually. I think by now that has been established. Everyone knows that playing the game manually is going to get you more points. However, it is not quite as cut and dry as being able to play manually, okay? There is a lot more to it, and a lot of it ultimately boils down to timing. Timing is probably the number one most important thing within the game for maximizing what you have, okay? People can say to me, people with Virgil EX can get more points, yada, yada, yada. None of that matters because if you have got yourself locked into these strategies for what you currently have in your box, you will get more points with good timing than you will not having good timing. It's as simple as that. But the game itself doesn't actually make it that easy for you to have good timing. Right? So here's what I'm going to talk about. You will hear people saying to you, run the Honda team, right? It's, it's commonly what you hear. How you get good stores, goals, run the Honda, flame Aidon team. Look at the person in first place, copy their timing, right? That's not actually as easy to do as you might think, okay? And I'll show you now what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm going to show you three small runs. I'll show you one, and then I'll just show you the differences between two other ones, okay? So, let's have a look at run number one. Okay, I'm going to start it from around about here. I used 51 seconds as my benchmark, okay? Now, I need you guys to realise something. One second, while it sounds like a long time, you have quite a lot of scope within that second that can affect your timing in this game, okay? Now, that probably sounds crazy to people, but I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, in this very first run, what you're going to see is the moment the clock rolls on to 51 seconds, I start my combo, okay? And I will run through, and then in the following run, we're going to have a slight variation on that, and then one more run after that, there'll be another slight variation on that, but all of these ta attacks are going to happen at the 51 second mark, okay? So, we go here, you see, as the clock at the top of the screen, rolls to 51, I've hit attack. So the moment I saw that one appear, I started my combo chain and I ran through the combo, okay? Now, what that does is that basically means for the rest of this run, where my characters are positioned is fully based off of where I am within the combo chain, okay? So you can see there that Chun-Li died. Okay, I think she died at around about 30 seconds or something to that effect. And then at the end, we'll see what my score is, okay? So we're getting just to the end of this run here. Probably die here, that's fine, absolutely fine. So run number one, where we started at bang on 51 seconds, that came in at 53k, okay? 
So on this second run, the difference is when it hits 51 seconds, I didn't attack, okay? I waited till just before it rolled over to 50 seconds flat. And you'll see that here, okay? So you'll notice, rolls to 51. I hit attack there just before it rolled over to become the next number in the sequence, which would be 50, okay? And as we run through, or fast forward through this one, just so we can see the score, we get to the end, characters died at different points and stuff, which is completely normal. The score was different, it was around about 70k, okay? Now, on this final kind of example run, I went in the middle, okay? So with this run, when we see it here, what you'll see, you're going to have to be quite eagle-eyed to see it, okay? But the difference is, 0.5 of a second, I guess that is, about halfway between it hitting 51 and it rolling over to 50, that is when I started my combo. So, go here, I just let it hang on 51 for just a fraction of a second, and then I attacked. Meaning I attacked around about 500th of a second faster this turn than I did before. Now if you watch this combo, what this basically does is this influences the entirety of the rest of the battle, okay? Now there is more to it than that, and we're going to get into that in a moment, but that affects the entirety of the rest of the battle. It affects where my units are positioned, it affects when my units take damage, it affects all of that stuff, okay? Now obviously there's layers of RNG involved in that as well, but when you attack, literally to the fraction of a second can have a huge impact on your score, okay? So when someone says to you, look at the person that's in first place, what score did they get? Just copy their timing, okay? And you've done it. And you've gone and you've gone and you've gone and you've not got those scores, okay? There is a few factors that could be preventing you hitting those scores. Obviously putting aside things like your level, your fighting heart and stuff like that. Because I'd like to think you're not comparing yourself against people who have boxes that are vastly superior to you, okay? I'd like to think if you're looking at someone and thinking, I should be able to achieve that, you've looked at them, you've looked at their score, you've got a similar fighting heart, you've got a similar level, all that type of stuff. Those variables are taken out of the equation. The things that could be stopping you is things like when you start your combo. Because if they're starting on 51 seconds and you keep doing that and you're not getting those scores, literally starting it just a few fractions of a second after it hits 51 seconds, you know, just before it gets to 50 seconds, that can make a huge difference to the amount of points that you get from a potential battle, okay? Now, over and above that, there's something else that you have to pay attention to. And I'm going to move for this because this one, I'm going to need to zoom the screen a little bit to actually show you what I'm talking about here. So if I move back just a little bit until we've got the combos of some buttons on the screen. So we can see here, we've got these combo buttons, right? Now, this may be something that affects Apple more than it affects Android. However, I don't believe that it is, okay? From speaking to people, I believe that this is something that affects all versions of the game. So, you've got these big buttons here, right? You would think you could hit these buttons quite easily. You can, but the game is very unresponsive, okay? The game is just not the most responsive in the world. I don't know why it is like this, but it is. And if you are trying to quickly string between combo, 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 back to start, combo, 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 back to the start, you want to be running through these combinations as quickly as possible. But sometimes the game doesn't let you. You'll hit the screen and it won't work and you need to hit it again really quickly, okay? What I've found and what a lot of people have found is with the button itself, if you look at that button, it says in use, you've got the number two there, and you've got B-U-F-F. If you aim your taps towards the lower third and more towards the right, so I would say that if you aim your taps around about in the region of the word use, as you can see there, and below, it tends to register your, your click 
a lot more accurately, a lot more consistently, right? So if you are trying to go C1, C2, C3, C1, C2, C3, right? If that's what you're trying to do very quickly, you will find you have oftentimes got a bit more success if you are actually tapping in those lower areas of the screen. Now, if I put this video back just a little bit, hopefully we can see my transitions working quite quickly here, right? Hopefully. So we go bang, bang, bang. Not, not too much missing, not too much having to take second hits, okay? If you've played this game a lot, you'll know that you do often have to tap, tap, tap. Oh, it never worked, tap, 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 right? But if you can aim your taps to be within that kind of region, you will find that those combos register a lot more often first time. Okay, and that is something that can definitely drive your score because you've got things like on certain teams, Poison who works off of building stacks, but she's got a short window of five seconds where you have to be transitioning through those moves as quickly as possible to be able to reach those higher scores. If you do not move fast enough, you will lose your stacks. And if you lose your stacks, you're going to lose your maximized combos, okay? That is what people are doing to push these scores as high as they possibly can, okay? It's not solely about the units. It is about getting used to these combos, just flowing as quickly as possible, not having a delay when you press the C3. When you've pressed that C3, you immediately want to be moving back down to that next unit in the combo chain to start all over again. When you're doing this quite early on, you can sometimes literally go bang, 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 you finished it, and then you move down. And I know that seems like nothing, right? But just literally knowing that as soon as I've hit that C3, wherever that next unit is on my combo chain, immediately having your finger going straight down to them to select the combo again and go through the thing again can make an absolute massive difference to your scores. But sometimes, depending on the battle, slowing it down isn't always a bad thing because of things like when you take an attack, the unit attacking generally goes to the front makes them more prone to damage depending on the boss whereas sometimes the boss will be hitting people at the back so the quicker you can get your back marker away from that back area the better they're less likely to take damage and you might not have to worry about dying as quickly okay now there is a few other things that you do need to watch out for when you're trying to push high scores okay and to be honest it's quite hard to kind of quantify this exactly. So I'm going to show you a video and I'll explain what happened here and hopefully it makes sense, right? But again, it's hard to see visually, but I will try and explain it. So in this run here, this was basically a test that um, Don had said to me. Um, he basically said that Without the Virgil EX move, it's it's really difficult, which it is, to get high scores. And honestly, doing this run, I didn't think I would be able to, to get a high score. This ended up being my highest score, and I didn't use Virgil's EX move in this entire run. And this was the winning run. This won the leaderboard, right? But I remembered there was a thing that I used to do in-game, which is essentially abusing... So the way I've seen it anyway... EX moves, okay? Because I don't know if you guys have noticed this yourself. When you play the game, sometimes EX moves can have odd consequences, okay? You'll pop an EX move and it'll seem like the entire game slowed down, but your clock won't slow down, okay? It'll make it seem like it's taken longer for you to string your combo together because the EX move somehow delayed the whole thing. You must have all noticed that by now. So there was a point where I figured, well, is that affecting things? Is this somehow not overlapping correctly? Is the game not able to process these two functions at the one time? So it made me start experimenting and I found that popping EX moves at precise moments can sometimes buy you time. 
and that's what happens in this fight we're about to watch, okay? So, if I go through this fight here, I do not have the Virgil EX move on my lineup here, okay? So, basically, what was happening was I was letting it build up, I was going to run through my fast combos, same, same strategy as ever, I was going to run through my fast combos, doing everything that I used to do, except when it comes to actually when I would normally pop my Virgil EX, I'm going to pop Potato, okay? And popping Potato at this point basically allowed me to survive. Popping Potato one second before this, I was dead. I'd done it a few times, I was dead. I had to get the timing to the point where when I popped Potato, the boss was just about to attack. So if we're watching the bar along the top of the screen, you can see as it's approaching, it's getting very close, it's just about to hit, and there, maximum bar, I popped potato right at that exact moment in time. The boss then does his actions, it's not enough to wipe the team, I can continue on with the combo, ramping up the score, meaning that, in essence, potato just bought me an extra round there, okay? So if you have got the patience, okay, you can find these little moments within your battles where doing things like popping EX moves at just the right time can just buy you that little bit more time. Because ultimately, Potato gives you a shield and a certain amount of HP. It really should not give you more HP or it shouldn't give you a greater chance of surviving on 20 seconds into the fight versus 19 seconds into the fight but it can because that 19 second mark is could literally be when that boss is just striking you and that whether it's the action of applying the ex move or whether it's just how the ex move works i don't think it is because it doesn't have a description that would state that but something within the coding or within the gameplay causes it to just give you what seems like that little bit more and you're able to push on and do things like potentially setting what for me in this occasion was the highest score that I had set but without the most OP EX move in the game. So using these little things, using things like transitioning fast between moves, using things like experimenting within the start point. So again, if you look at the person above you and you think I should be able to beat this person and they've attacked on 50 seconds and you can't get the same type of scores as them if you can get your combo transitions to be tight to be fast which top, tapping the lower third of the attack button like I've said should allow you to do and you're still not hitting those scores then just remember that one second, while it does seem like a short period of time, you've got 10 one hundredths of a second within that, and you can literally attack at any point within that one second bracket, which again doesn't seem like a lot, but there's so much variance in the outcome just by attacking one Mississippi. There's four syllables in Mississippi, and you can see it. So you can attack on me, you can attack on se, you can attack on the other se, or you can attack on Ippy. That's four completely separate points that you could hit your attack button, and they're all within the same second, right? That can totally influence your outcome and give you completely different scores. A lot of people don't actually realize that there is a lot more nuance to getting the highest scores in Street Fighter now. It didn't used to be this way. It used to be all about who's got the most power, who's got the most characters, now, honestly, it's who's got the most patience. Who has got the most patience to discover the optimal time to attack? Who's got the most patience to do that while also getting the right amount of stacks? Stuff like that. But all of it goes together. And without the timing, without the transitions, and without the patience, you can't tie it all together to get the high scores. Okay? Now, this... The reason for this video, like I said, it was a conversation with a guildmate. He flat out said he was unable to achieve even remotely close to his best scores using the proper full Fadon team. 
And honestly, the only reason for that is literally down to how you're playing. Because with that team, if you are doing things the correct way, which is attacking, attacking swiftly, and attacking at the right points, your scores will skyrocket. There is no reason why you should be getting the same score on team two, three, and four as you're getting on any team that you're running with aid on. Whether you have Flame Chun Li, whether you have Regal Honda, it doesn't matter. He can outscore every other team if you are playing the game correctly with him. Okay? So, this applies to everything, by the way. This applies to everything. If you can string your combos together faster, plain and simply, you'll end up getting better scores, okay? So, getting used to doing it, getting used to where you hit on the screen, it might sound tedious, it might sound annoying, but it becomes like muscle memory, honestly. You will instinctively just start tapping that part of the screen. Whereas, right now, you might find yourself a bit like this, trying to move through your combos, like multiply striking the screen at each point where these attacks are. Now, I'm not saying you won't still hit the screen a couple of times, but again, that's that's kind of muscle memory that you're used to doing. But if you do strike that kind of lower third area of the attack button, you will find that you can quite swiftly move through them and string those combos together faster. Now, I know for a lot of you guys, this probably is a bit more in depth than you needed it to be because you already do this. But there's a lot of players who don't know this. There's a lot of players who just don't get these scores and who don't realize it is literally something as simple as you've pressed your C1 and you've got this bit of a delay before you've hit your C2. That can make a huge difference to your score. So if you can tighten that up a little bit, you might find that come the next boss, you've got yourself much higher scores. So give it a bit of trying. Give it a bit of practice and you should hopefully find that things like your scores in Boss Rush, Crusade, Path of Fire, the next boss, go up. Just at the start, don't be disheartened if you're not hitting those really high numbers because in all honesty, <clears throat> for all of us that do those runs, for every one good run, we've binned like 10 awful runs where Maybe we've just not been quite fast enough on the transitions. Maybe something has happened that doesn't normally happen. But with patience, you will hit the numbers and you will start to perform better in-game. Anyway, hopefully this all made sense. Hopefully it helps people somewhat. Um, I've been Hayes Inc. I can, in fact, play manual. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, and I'll see you later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>